So this is Royal Observatory Greenwich. Just have a look on this view. Greenwich, which is zero zero Dublin. Paris Harrison's first timekeeper. Come on, have a look on that bit. And here, of course, we have Harrison uh, third timekeeper. Harrison worked for uh, for 19 years on this clock. It will be equal day, equal night again on the 21st of March, which is the spring equinox. Wow. So this is Royal Observatory Greenwich. Just have a look on this view. A 24 hour clock. It's uh, one of the earliest electrically driven public clocks and was installed here in 1852. Here we have a public standards of length. So here is the entrance to the observatory. Opening time it's uh, 10 o'clock and last entry 15 uh, past 6. The prices are 16 pounds per person. Then if you are a student, 8 for children. So here we have William Herschel's telescope. Only this part remain of it. Okay, this is our ticket. A two person. Let's see. I read something about that uh, red ball on top. It was something at uh, the first uh, timing or whatever. And here, some information about the dolphin sundials, which is right here. If you see, the shadow is right here now. That's 10 and something, if you see here. And the time now, it's, if you're able to see on my phone, and <laughs> exactly like that how cool is that what is going on here with this line I don't know ah that's the meridian zero I think <laughs> so cool <laughs> so this line here what you see on the floor this is uh, like a prime meridian, meridian zero. In Hong Kong, Los Angeles, Tehran, Athens, Rome, Istanbul, Montreal, Greenwich, which is zero zero, Dublin, Paris, two degrees, Moscow, Helsinki. I can't read this one, the Iceland capital. <laughs> and here it's Alida! <laughs> it's my sat map broken. <laughs> Greenwich Meridian marker. And from here, again, we have uh, another stunning view over the London. Here it's a small map to show you what you are able to see from this point. Okay, we go in now. home of the Astronomers Royal John Pond, Frank Dyson Oh, 
here is the old guard, old signs. Edwin Halley. Yeah. Uh, this guy, I think, uh, he discovered the uh, Halley, Halley comet, work on comets. We are not allowed uh, down there. Okay, let's move on. So nice. Here it's a table with some article written on the table. That's cool. I love that, that globe. So basically here was the dining room. <laughs> Another table. I changed now on 30 frames per second to have more light. This is like a pyjama or something. Yeah. <laughs> Living by the clock. It's a small clock here. Yeah. <laughs> Neville's homemade remedies. So almond for the heartburn, lemon for cough. Basically, some medicine. A view across London. I like this. Nursery room. So basically, they live here, those guys. Some sort. Uh, this was the parlor. Serge George Bidal Airy. Yeah. Octagonal room. And we go up the stairs now. This is the octagonal room. Oh, how nice is that? Look at this. So imagine all those scientists sit here thinking some old clocks here. Oh. I'm not sure if you're able to see something through that. But I'll have to try it. I'll have to look through that stick. All I was able to see was a bright light. So nothing special on that. So basically this it's uh, that telescope by unknown maker 1992 dating uh, to 1676 this is the oldest part of the observatory 
It was originally known as the Great Room or uh, Camera Stellata, which is mean from Latin uh, Star Room. with some artifacts and the books, all books. Look at this nice globe, yeah. This is the thing, yeah. We are now here. This is basically the Meridian Zero. Oh, how nice is this? Some astronomical model. This is like what the solar system model. That's beautiful. Here we have a Harrison first timekeeper. Harrison's first timekeeper. Come on, have a look on that beauty. So this uh, timekeeper took about five years to be built. In uh, 1736 it was uh, tested on a sea voyage to Lisbon and back. This here is the Harrison's uh, second timekeeper. Uh, Harrison received 250 pounds from the Board of uh, Longitude to development uh, H2, an improved version of his uh, C-clock. And here, of course, we have Edison uh, third timekeeper. This is basically top of the art. Harrison worked for, uh, for 19 years on this clock. He was awarded the Royal Society Copley Medal for his work. It, were, it has uh, over uh, 700 precisely engineered parts, but even before it was completed, Harrison realized the heavy balances were uh, unstable and began working on a radical new prototype. Here we have uh, all kind of clocks. This one uh, is telling the temperature. Yeah, long service, look how big this is. My. This is like a chronometer. And here we have a huge uh, wall clock. So Harrison uh, began making this clock in 1740 along with the third marine timekeeper, H3. He was uh, still adjusting it when the, he died in 1776. Equal darkness on the globe. 
And after that, these lines are going to start curling in like this. And we are going to start heading towards our winter. And the sun hemisphere are going to be moving towards the sun. And their, light, their daylight is going to increase. Okay? And, um, and then it'll be equal day, equal night again on the 21st of March, which is the spring equinox. But it's kind of nice to watch this get slowly and slowly darker. And, and um, yeah. At the um, shortest day for us, which will be the 21st of December, the sun will strike directly on the meridian down here. Okay. Then it will come back up to the middle here until the equinox again for spring. And then it's going to head up here for the 21st of June. So it does this sort of figure of eight pattern against the meridian at 12 noon throughout the year. And you can, um, we've got a sundial um, where it shows you where, where, what month and the sun strikes and rain, what month it is. And you can actually track it. And a, a Polish scientist had discovered this pattern as well. So that's what this particular thing is here. So it's a very interesting clock, yeah? You can literally watch the time go by, the seasons go by, and watch the behavior of the sun as it strikes the meridian. Yeah. Okay? All right, then. Okay, the last part I have here Edmond uh, Halley. Okay. Ooh, how nice is this? So basically, you sit on the chair, this chair here, lean back, and look at the stars. This one, it's uh, looking straight up. That one. Look at this massive thing here. With a huge telescope. And uh, ensuring that it is uh, aligned correctly on the main meridian is through here. Wop, wop, wop. So basically this one it's a line with the middle one and uh, in the third one in the back there. So up to the time and society gallery. Here we have uh, all kind of artifacts and, uh, and stuff. I think here, if you want, you can write a note and leave it here. On all of those nice watches, pocket watches. And some more watches. I know you want it, I want it too. I will go on uh, that stairs now. This is great equatorial telescope. Let's proceed. Oh, okay. I don't have enough room, yeah? Not easy, yeah. <laughs> Great equatorial telescope. There's the entrance area. Okay. Visit route. Basically, this is the main telescope here. So you look through there. Basically, over there is the people. 
Look how massive it is. Nice. Here is like a short history over the, the ages. 1859, the first telescope. This building originally had a drum shaped dome housing a telescope with a 12.75 inch lens. My God. In 1883, a bigger telescope was installed. Wartime use. It uh, has some bomb damage. 75 became a public telescope. And here is uh, used for uh, education. What we have here. Some control panel and some information about some stars. This is the closest one of our solar system, Proxima Centauri. Okay, one last look over this uh, impressive telescope. Okay, and the last part, it's uh, of course the shop, souvenir shop, from, uh, from where you can buy all kind of souvenirs, memories, probably I will buy something from here, but depends uh, <laughs> on the prices, what prices they have. Alina already choose something. This so clips it. It's about uh, ten pounds. What is this? This is like a calendar. Ten pounds. Okay. 50 years calendar, 18 pounds, is that one? Whoop. Look how nice is this. Ah, this is like... Uh, like, I don't know. A Paris... Uh, we have here a small telescope, which is 30 pounds. A bigger clapsid, which is uh, 50. Some clocks, like uh, the one you see outside, the big one, the 24 hour clock. It's uh, 150 pounds. Harma skeleton lantern clock, which is 250. Look how nice is this one. Pyramid clock. It's actually on uh, sale right now. It's 320 from 400. Universal ring pocket sundial. <laughs> 45 pounds, this is very interesting. Look how expensive those things are. A seniors. Ah, it's actually you can move them. Yeah, that's nice. And a small one. This is something they're uh, using for. Uh, Nautica, London, for sailing maybe. World map. Here we have like, uh, yeah, Atlantis, 
NASA, United States, a rocket. <laughs> we have here a very nice uh, magnet with uh, moon face. This is only four pounds. The red time ball on the top of Flamsteed House is uh, one of the world's first public time signal. It was installed in 1833 to enable uh, navigators on the ship in the Thames River to check their uh, marine chronometers. Uh, the time ball drops daily at uh, one o'clock. <laughs> 